In this video, we're going to discuss Power Query Data Connectors. We're going to look at what it is, why it's important, and some of the options that you have if you don't have a connector for your certain data source. All of that and more. So without further ado, let's get started. Hi, my name is Fernan, and welcome to the Solutions Abroad YouTube channel, where we cover tips, tricks, and best practices when working with Power BI. I upload new videos every week, so make sure you hit that subscribe button and the bell icon to get notified when a new one is out. So let's start by answering what data connectors are. So they're basically a feature in Power Query that lets you connect to your data sources to fetch data from them. It might be from an Excel source or from a SQL database. And I say it's a Power Query feature, not just Power BI, because it's a feature that exists in a lot of, kind of different softwares that support Power Query. Things like Power Automate, Power Apps, or even things like Dataflows or Excel. So for now, let's have a look at it in a context of the Power BI desktop. So you will find your connectors by going to Get Data. Now you will have a list of the different connectors that you can connect to from this main list, which are the common data sources. And if you click more, you will have access to a ton more data sources that, that lets you connect to you know, different data sources in different places. One of the main advantages of data connectors is the fact that you can connect directly to where your data is stored. This means that whether your file is stored locally or in an online source somewhere, Having this direct connection means that updating your reports to get the most recent version of your data is simply a matter of refreshing the report. Let me show you an example of how you can use a data connector to get data from a source. So here we are in Wikipedia. I've just opened a single page here, which is the page around London boroughs. If you're familiar with the channel, you know that I use this page quite a lot. And basically, you'll notice that there are a bunch of, you know, different information here about London and its different boroughs. And as part of this kind of article, you have a table list here of the different boroughs where they're designated and their former areas. And let's say we want to analyze this table and transform this table in Power Query. So what we're going to do is simply copy the URL. We'll go back to Power BI here. We're going to look for the connector web. And then we'll hit connect here. And we'll ask for a URL. We'll just simply paste the article's URL on the Wikipedia page. Here it will ask us to authenticate. Now, depending on what type of source you have and uh, how private your data is, you would or you might need to use an API key or log into the service itself. Now, in this case, because the Wikipedia page is public, we don't really need to authenticate anything. So we'll just leave it anonymous for now and we'll simply hit connect. And as you can see, what it will do is it will try to find various information in the page, along with some suggested tables of kind of what you might want to pull from, uh, from this page. So let's have a look at some of them. So we can see that there's a table here. Let's just have a look at all of these. So I can see that this table is basically what we need. So this is the list of the different boroughs. So if we just simply take it and hit load, you'll be able to work with this data. And from here, you typically do your normal processes like cleaning it up, deleting your columns, renaming some of the columns. And the benefit of using this method to pull it into Power BI is that when the table gets updated, you simply need to refresh the report that you have here, and it will simply inherit that update automatically. Because you have so many different data connectors available to you, how you connect to them and what kind of authentication you need might be different based on the respective service. So in some cases, you might need to log in, or maybe you need to use an API key. And having data connectors available basically just makes your life and connecting to these data sources a lot easier. So if we head back to the Get Data section and hit More here, you'll see that there are a lot of different options for you to choose from when it comes to data connectors. And the lists that you have here are what we call certified connectors, which are basically connectors that have been certified 
provided by Microsoft or created by third party suppliers. So the only thing that you need to know about certified connectors is that if a connector is certified, it means that you can use them as they are. But what if you can't find a data connector to the online service that you want to connect to? So if it's not in this list, you might need to look at some alternatives like using custom connectors. So custom connectors are basically connectors that are created by third party, not yet supported by Microsoft. And you'll find tons of different tutorials out there on how you can use custom connectors or even create your own one from Visual Studio. Now to be able to use custom connectors, you need to make sure you enable it in the Power BI desktop. Uh, settings. So if you go to the cog icon here under security, you just need to make sure that you allow any extension to load without validation or warning. So this will allow you to use custom connectors. Now, if you want to create one yourself, you'll have to do it from Microsoft Visual Studio and you'll need to install the Power Query SDK, which will let you create the right files in the right format, the .mez format. Now, if you want to get started with creating your own custom data connectors. I'm going to leave a link in the description box below of this really useful uh, GitHub that is uh, created by Microsoft that lets you quickly get started with, you know, custom connectors. So exactly what you need to do in order to create or install these SDKs, how to create your custom connectors and some samples too. The process itself is not too difficult, but it is a little bit finicky. So it's a useful resource to be able to kind of get started or see how it looks like. Another option is if you want to simply try out custom connectors and how you can start using them. I'm going to leave a link to this one. Uh, article from Miguel, which is a really useful custom connector that I used a while back. And this is a connector that lets you connect to the YouTube analytics, which will let you analyze, you know, some information and insights regarding your, you know, traffic, subs subscriptions and things like this. It has been a while though, since I last used it uh, and the post was made back in 2017. So it might not even be useful anymore. So let me know in the comments below if it still works. But when I last used it, it was pretty useful to, to be able to connect to it directly. So uh, go check this article out. I'll leave it uh, below. As I said, one thing to bear in mind, if you're looking to use custom connectors in your Power BI reports is that it is not natively supported as an online source. If you publish this into the Power BI service. So just a quick recap. When you have a Power BI report in Power BI desktop in your local machine and you use a data connector, let's say a connector that connects you to SharePoint, that connection, when you hit the refresh button, is the connection between your local machine and SharePoint. Now, if you publish this report in the Power BI service, the connection is now from Power BI service to SharePoint with your local machine, not in the picture anymore. And custom connectors, as far as I know, don't work as an online service. So if you want to publish this report into the Power BI service and you want it to be refreshing automatically, you need to install something we call a data gateway. Now, I covered data gateways a long time ago, and it's basically a feature that lets you refresh your report in the service by using the data gateway that is installed in your local machine to be able to refresh the data that is in the service. Now, while this option is available, I typically don't recommend this just because using a gateway means that you need to have your local machine always online at the point of when you need to refresh your reports in the service. And I don't really like that dependency. And to solve this issue, you might need to install uh, and use a virtual machine where you will have the data gateways in there and it will always be online, but it will usually be at an additional cost. So I typically just stick with online sources if I want to refresh my reports automatically in the service. Now, speaking of the supports, I know that we have a bunch of Power Query data connectors. And while this feature is available in different softwares like Power BI, Data Flows, Power Apps, Power Automate, what is available for each of these connectors and the service that they support can and usually do vary. So for example, if you want to connect to the Zendesk online service, which is just a ticketing platform, you will be able to find this in Get Data when you use it in Power BI. But if you try to do the Get Data experience and get the Zendesk data from Excel, you won't be able to. So what I use in that case is this 
article, Connectors in Power Query, that lets you actually see the lists of all the different connectors that are available in Power Query and what services you can do with them. So for example, let's have a look at this example that we were looking at, which is Zendesk. So if you simply search for Zendesk in this page, you should be able to find it. And you will notice that here in this handy matrix, it will tell you that while well, you can use it for Power BI semantic models, you can't use it on any other services like Excel or even data flows, which actually I just learned just now. So you can only use it to connect uh, from semantic models into the Zendesk service. And that's really it for this video. I hope you now know a little bit more about Power Query data connectors. Thanks for watching. As usual, give this video a like if you found it useful. Give it a dislike if you didn't, so I'll do it better for next time. Ask your questions in the comment section box below so I can help you and you can help others. If you liked the video, we have a Patreon page where you can support the channel and get exclusive perks like early access, demo files, and credits at the end of these videos. Thanks again for watching and see you in the next one. Bye-bye.